Hey guys, my name is Andrew Perlot with rawfoodhealth.net and today I'm here with Brittany Taylor and we're talking about an interesting subject. Most of you guys are probably wearing some form of deodorant because you smell. If you don't, you probably have a significant other or friend who smells. And we want to talk about whether or not you smelling bad is optional because in our experience, we've found that we can dramatically alter our smell for worse or better by changing what we eat. So uh, if you guys have watched some of our previous videos on this channel, you know that Brittany and I do acro yoga together. It's a pretty intimate thing. And one of the things that we do is we also play with other people. And when we play together, we notice, you know, it's not so bad. But a lot of people <laughs> that do acro smell really bad, just like the general populace, because they're eating really unhealthy things. So, um, Brittany, uh, you've, you've flown with other bases. Uh, how would you say the difference is smell-wise? Well, I mean, I should start by saying that I have a high tolerance for body odor. I, I have a keen smell sense of smell, but I can also deal with it. So I'm not going to say that it lowers my enjoyment of acro. I just want to put that out there. But you definitely notice it. And you, when I fly with you, I feel like there's relatively no body odor. I, you don't often smell. And with other people, I don't even have to be that close to notice. So it's dramatic difference. Mm. So one thing that happened to me when I became a raw foodist is I started smelling everything more acutely. And I would say that it does bother me. Um, and I realize there's an element of personal preference here. Maybe some people really like... Pheromones. Um, yeah. Well, um, in any event, uh, so, so you, in your own diet, like when you came from eating, um, you know, a standard American diet and then like gradually doing your diet upgrades, how did you notice change? Like what were the elements and like how, how did that change your body odor? Well, when I first started eating raw food, I was still eating things like green onion and maybe onion in general and sometimes having some spices. So I, I did notice a difference in my body odor for sure, um, but it wasn't as dramatic as the difference I've noticed in the last year or so when I started to cut out those things and just really eat a more simple diet. Mm. So in my experience, going vegan reduced my body odor to an extent, but I could not give up deodorant just after giving up uh, meat, dairy, and eggs. And when I went raw, I saw a further improvement, but again, I still could not give up deodorant. And I've seen a lot of raw foodists who are raw and, and think they don't smell, but they really smell bad and should be wearing deodorant. Uh, but I found that when I buckled down and, and eliminated not only garlic and onions, but also... Nuts and seeds. Yeah, the nuts and seeds yeah. really make a huge difference. Um, and also all members of the Allium family. So we've got the um, like chives and, and all of those uh, slightly less potent versions of onion and garlic, which still um, really make a difference. And so at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about what are some of the compounds in those foods that are causing you to have body odor. Um, so... What, what, do you have any tips for people? Like if they, like what, what were the, what are the big changes you noticed? Like what would you have them do if you, uh, if you, they wanted to cut down on their body odor? Well, it's kind of like you just said, I think it does come back to diet and cutting out those things. Um, yeah, I mean, it really makes a difference. Like I said, I noticed I could go to a more natural deodorant after switching to a raw food diet. Um, one that wasn't as strong and still I felt like made me feel comfortable, but now I really prefer not to wear deodorant and I find that if I've had a more complicated meal or indulged in nuts and seeds or something like that, I feel uncomfortable the next day. So that's kind of, those are kind of my tips. I think, I think it comes back to diet. I don't think there's any real way around it. Otherwise you're just covering up a symptom. You're not really, you're not really getting to the cause of it. Mm. And I think what it comes down to is if you don't want to smell, essentially there's steps you can take to make yourself smell wor to smell better, but maybe not go all the way. I think that most people hearing us suggest, oh, stop eating nuts and seeds, stop eating the Allium family. That's pretty much stepping over the edge right. into raw food craziness. That's fair. I mean, granted, like, uh, you know, I'm already suggesting you stop eating meat, dairy, and eggs and become a raw foodist, but give up those things too, you know? 
Um, so uh, let's let's talk a bit about some of the steps you can take and some of the experiments you can do and why they work. So what happens to a person's body odor when they go on a no meat diet? This study decided to find out. Men were divided into two groups with half eating meat and the other half eating no meat for a period of two weeks. In the final 24 hours of this period, they wore odor-collecting pads under their arms. These were smelled by a group of 30 women who rated the scents on pleasantness, masculinity, attractiveness, and intensity. Finally, the meat group was put on a meat-free diet and the other group started eating meat for another two-week period. The smell test was then repeated. When they were on the meat-free diets, all the men were rated as having more attractive, pleasant, and less intense scents. Perceptions of masculinity, however, were not at all affected. So why do men who eat meat smell significantly worse than those who don't? And how does that apply to the other observations we've made about foods that cause us to have body odor? Several food elements contribute to body odor, but one of the main ones is sulfur. Take a sniff of the mineral. It actually doesn't smell like much, but what if you were to take a smell of one of its major forms, hydrogen sulfide? In sewers and swamps and hot springs, you'll smell hydrogen sulfide. What does it smell like? It smells like rotten eggs. There are four amino acids that contain sulfur, but in terms of the protein we need, there's only two of importance. It's methionine and cysteine. Sulfur plays a critical role in our body, and we would never want to go without it. But luckily, we can't really. But we can definitely eat way too much of it. One of the easiest ways to starve cancer cells is actually just to stop feeding the cancer cells methionine. Their growth just more or less flatlines while normal human cells do just fine. Cancer cells often take up so much sulfur that they produce a gas which reeks of it, and dogs can be trained to detect it. When you chew a food in your mouth and then it moves onto your intestines, bacteria breaks down its protein through a process called putrefaction, and then gases in those sulfur-containing amino acids get broken down, they move through the intestinal wall and they go into the bloodstream. That's how we start exuding these stenches from our pores that we call body odor. If you want to cut down on your BO, you need to start removing the biggest sources of sulfur from your diet, and no question, meat, dairy, and eggs are the heavy hitters in the entire spectrum of food you could be eating. As you can see on this chart, by the time you've cut out the meat, dairy, and eggs, and the garlic, and the onions, and the nuts, and the seeds, and the beans, and the potatoes, you're going to be taking in radically less sulfur, which is not enough to cause you any problems. You'll get, be, still be getting enough sulfur, but it will be enough to dramatically cut down on your body odor. Now, you'll notice that the garlic and onions and other allium family members are not particularly high in amino acids, which contain sulfur compared to, say, meat, dairy, and eggs, but they pack a lot of stench. A lot of the sulfur in these foods are in MSM. It's high in cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and bok choy. The allium family is also high in it, with things like chives and garlic and onions and shallots. Um, and the allium family is also high in a sulfurous compound called allicin. Thiol is another issue. If you've eaten asparagus, tofu, beans, yeast, artichokes, carob, and other allium family members, you've eaten a decent amount of it. Finally, remember that sulfur kills bacteria, so it's used in food preservation. So a lot of dried fruit and vegetables, bread, molasses, nuts, seeds, alcoholic beverages, and a wide variety of other processed foods have sulfur added to it as a preservative. If you want to experiment with decreasing your body odor, I suggest you perform three experiments. First, just cut out all meat, dairy, and eggs. Then try adopting a low-fat raw vegan diet, and then keep going with that raw vegan diet, but cut out nuts, seeds, and the allium family, and see how your body reacts and how your body odor changes. I think you will be pleased with the results, and you'll find that there is a step up in each step. You can probably figure out experiment one on your own, but for help with experiment two and experiment three, because they're very easy to mess up, I suggest you check out my book, Raw Food, Weight Loss, and Vitality, which will explain how to adopt these types of diets in a sustainable manner. 
So guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that information. I just want to kind of reiterate, there's steps you can take here. The people who smell the worst are almost invariably people who are eating diets that are rich in meat, dairy, and eggs. They generally are the ones who are at the gym just putting off that horrible, noxious odor. Um, the vegans are already a lot better, and it's probably not as bad. Um, and, and then, you know, raw foodists maybe get a little bit better, but you're not going to be odor free unless you kind of, you take the, the next step and cut out the, uh, the nuts and seeds and the, uh, the allium family as well. So you can decide if you care enough to make that step. Um, personally, for me, I feel best off of those foods anyway, so it's not really a big deal. Uh, but you're going to make your own decision. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please like it and share it. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to this channel. See you later.